Welcome to the South African Civil Society Information Service. I'm Fazila Farouk in Johannesburg, coming to you this morning from the Ituba Art Gallery in downtown Johannesburg, where we are to talk to the curator of a wonderful exhibition that's been put together to reflect on South Africa's 20 years of democracy. We're here today to talk to Farida Nazir. She's a lecturer at the University of Johannesburg and she is the curator of this exhibition and she's going to tell us first Farida a little bit about herself um, and how it is that she got to uh, put together this exhibition and what her vision was for this exhibition. Welcome to Saxis Farida. Thank you Fazila. Um, I, as, you, as you've said, I'm from the University of Johannesburg and I, I'm a lecturer there but I also am a practicing artist um, I'm originally from Cape Town, from, from the Cape Flats, and I feel quite strongly about socio-political issues um, and psychosocial issues um, as they reflect a lot of my own experiences. The exhibition is about 20 years of democracy, but it also goes beyond those 20 years, so into the deeper historical settings of South Africa. And so the history of South Africa yes. before democracy. Yes. I work a lot with the idea of consequence and trace and memory, so historical traje trajectories and how, that, how those influence where we are now um, and how that, those influence our psyche and our physical uh, space um, in South Africa and where we position ourselves now. Uh, yeah, so the, the overall exhibition is to pull together uh, reflective ideas and reflections of, of the last 20 years, but also beyond, as I said. And it looks to, to both commemorate, but also to critically reflect on specific issues that we're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Tell me, who are the artists that you invited to participate? I know you're one of the artists that mm -hmm. have put together an installation. Um, but who else has been involved? Uh, the artist would be Gordon Fraud, uh, a sculptor um, and installation artist, and he's also from the University of Johannesburg. We've got Avita Sufel, who's from, the, from VUT, um, and she's put together this specific installation that, we, that we've become part of. Um, and then we've got Opa Mokwena, um, and he's also an educator. So there's an interesting synergy in terms of where we, where we all come from, um, our careers, etc., and, and, and how we, we interface with artworks. So here we are, Farida, sitting in the middle of spent bullets. <laughs> So it's a very interesting installation. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this one? Um, and then let's talk about the other installations as well and the artists that have been in, um, the artists that have worked on those. What's this one about? This one is by Avita Sufel mm -hmm. and it's called Bite the Bullet. And it's about violence um, in, in its broad sense. So I think what is quite interesting about the work is that on the opening night, certain people walked in um, and they p immediately associated it to the, the, the current trial, the, very, the one that's like big in the, me in the media with Oscar Pistorius. Um, and they, they asked me whether it was the, the crime scene um, from, the, from the Oscar Pistorius um, case. Other associations would be Marikana. Um, those are those are quite obvious because they're very very close to where we are now. They're very like close in our memories to to what we're experiencing now in terms of news and media. Um, but I think the artist's intention is mainly to bring up this idea of violence and 20 years and beyond again. So she she does reference uh, like. Uh, violence that, that, that occurred prior to the 1994, um, but also the perpetuation of that violence into the past 20 years. And then she goes further than that to say that there's five years beyond that or after that, there's these unspent bullets. And we're hopeful. We're very hopeful that they're not going to be spent. But there's this uncertainty as to where we're going as a nation. So, so I think that is what she was trying to represent with these five unspent ones who are positioned in a barrel. Um, so there's, a, there's a, a play with hope 
uncertainty, where are we going, what, what is happening, especially now with the elections, etc. Yeah. It's absolutely fascinating. Tell us a little bit about Opa Mokwena's work. His work is called Our Gnomes and he plays around with the mythology of which, which according to him is a German or Europe, European, broadly European mythology of gnomes, garden gnomes, um, and they're placed in the garden in order to like, do the garden work at night. Um, and then he juxtaposes that with a tokolosh, um, which is kind of malevolent and, and, and benevolent at the same time. So they do gooders, but they also have a very naughty streak to them. So the tokolosh, for instance, um, is a little critter or a creature who, if you leave your dishes at night, he's supposed to do the dishes um, um, at night. But people are quite afraid of him also because he's believed to have quite a long phallus, which people often say is a tail. Um, so what's interesting about the works, just to get back to the overall um, idea of the works, is that what came across throughout the body of work was the phallus and which, which obviously pertains to um, patriarchy. And this wasn't a planned thing in the beginning. Um, I think it's just in our collective um, uh, psyches that we deal with this patriarchal society on a day-to-day -day basis. So in each of the works, somehow the phallus is represented. Let's talk a little bit about Gordon Froud's work. Um, Gordon's Fra Gordon Froud's work is an, 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 an untitled work um, and it's taking previously exhibited artworks from a, a range of artists in South Africa, so they're all South African works, um, and he's commenting on the fact that we are a very censored nation. Um, so the idea of democracy comes through in, in, in that work quite strongly. Um, this idea of freedom of speech that is supposedly practiced in South Africa, but he plays around with the fact that in, in actual fact there's this artistic landscape um, and artists in South Africa that have very little freedom of speech in terms of the works that he's, he's, um, that he's drawn on for his major installation. So for instance, um, he's got the spear, um, which he's stretched with on, on, a, on a vinyl type canvas so that it shows the tension in the work and the tension that is created and that again refers to the title of the exhibition which is Tension Torsion. Um, and he's got the Madiba sculpture, um, which he stretched the arms of to like uh, <laughs> lengths that is, that is not so proportionate <laughs> to the actual sculpture and he's got a couple of other works there that has been quite contentious in the past couple of years and that is, that is it's been attempts to, sense, to censor these works. Um, yeah, so he's dealing with the idea of um, uh, censorship. censorship. And, yeah. <laughs> and let's talk about your work. Um, you have what look like whips standing up, upright. Yeah. Um, my work is titled Nachfani Lang Latte, which is translated to Night of the Long Switches. And the switch is something that you beat someone with. Um, so it plays around with this mythology um, black of what black on white genocide. Um, and if you, the, the first word that I can associate to it is fear. Um, fear of black uprising against, against white, which is common in South Africa. And it's an old mythology that, that is based on um, a prediction by, what is his name? <laughs> I forgot. Sinner van Rensburg. He was an Afrikaans, what is it, soothsayer, mm -hmm. I suppose. And he predicted that three days after Madiba's death, there would be a huge uprising and whites would be murdered by blacks in South Africa. And, and we're still wondering when that's going to happen because Madiba has passed. Um, 
he obviously didn't mention that name. The, the um, prediction occurred a hundred years ago almost. Um, so he spoke in general he terms spoke about general, a leader? About a great leader who would okay. pass and then three days there'd be this genocide. So there was a lot of fear last year around Madiba's death that this would happen. Um, besides for that, it, 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 I, I, I prefer dealing with, with artworks that has got a direct kind of link to my own experiences and, and I come from a coloured background. So what is filtered into coloured identity um, from Afrikaans identity is quite interesting because there was this fear amongst the coloured community in, in Cape Town that this would happen around 1994 um, and that whites and coloured would, coloureds would be murdered by blacks. So there's a strange hierarchy that, that, that is embedded in our kind of thinking and in our ideology in South Africa that this hierarchy still exists and that there's fear between different races, different tribes, etc. So the exhibition in general seems to have dealt with a wide number of human rights issues. Mm -hmm. There's racism, there's violence, um, there's patriarchy, um, these are very strong themes that are coming through but I think one of the most pressing issues in South Africa is inequality 20 years after democracy, um, economic in inequality in particular mm -hmm. um, and I have to say having looked at this exhibition and visited many others over the years it's not something that I see our artists here in South Africa grappling with this economic inequality. Can you comment on that? I think that what is difficult with, 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 with this specific theme is that um, there's a lot of criticism um, in the art world and it's called, um, it's called poverty porn, where people uh, depict um, or they, they create or represent um, poverty in a specific way where it's, it's accessible to your, uh, tourists for instance and that is consumed by tourists or by the rich um, and it's seen as a very negative it's, a, it's seen as a very negative um, type of, of, of like or an, a very negative artistic field to deal with so it's a very sensitive issue within the, the art world in my opinion um, because often when you speak of things outside of yourself um, and, 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 you, and you comment on things like that it becomes um, it's your interpretation of that um, and you become an outsider and other in that in that artwork that that is just my opinion um, so I in terms of, of, of my own experiences with, with um, art practice I therefore prefer to steer away from things outside of myself um, and, and look at my own history and my own experiences um, and depict things that are quite personal to me um, in order to steer away from that othering process. And again, it's about personal experiences. Mm -hmm. So artists often relate to their own experiences. So if, they, if there's an experience of violence to some extent, then that's what's going to come through their work. If there's an experience of fear, then that's in, in terms of what we've produced here. So what this, this exhibition is, is looking at is like, your, what is your first association if you think about 20 years of democracy? Um, and how would you communicate that um, association to other people? How would you explore that? Um, in a, a visual way and what was interesting is that there's such a dominant theme of patriarchy and of human rights issues and it's specifically race and specifically censorship and quite strong political connotations. Rita, thank you very much for joining us at Saxis and thank you to our viewers and listeners for joining us at the South African Civil Society Information Service. And remember, if you want more social justice news and analysis, you can get that at our website at saxis.org.za.